there's a proposed $15,000 first time home buyer tax credit. So many people in the industry, as well as potential future homeowners, are really excited about this potentially passing. And they're shocked, those that know, on why anybody, especially the president of the Realtors Association, is so against this, and any of the leading mortgage experts are really against this too. Would anybody in the industry where they garner their income from people buying homes be against free money being given to first time home buyers to buy homes, right? You would think more people buying homes, the more money those people make. It's because they remember what happened at the last time this was done and how it actually really hurt all the first time home buyers out there. So let me explain. So the last time we had a first time home buyers tax credit, it was for 2009 and it expired in April of 2010 when somebody goes to file their tax returns, right? Well, think about it this way. If I give somebody a deadline to get 10 or $15,000 put towards their tax bill, what are they gonna do? And they're thinking about buying a home. They're gonna rush to make sure that they take advantage of that. So what ended up happening was, is in the first quarter of 2010, before all these tax credits expired, is you had everybody running into the housing market to take advantage of this tax credit. So what happened was, is the beginning of January of 2010, a house that was $300,000, and mind you, had just come out of 2009, one of the worst tax years. By May 2010, that house had gone up to $330,000. Why? You only have a certain amount of inventory. And when you have a bunch of individuals all rushing at the same time to take advantage of a house credit or tax credit, it's going to do what? It's gonna put so much demand on a limited supply that it's going to force the price up. Rather than just having these individuals be buying over the course of time, you're forcing them into a tight window to take advantage of this. What happened in a housing market that was very, very flat is it shot house prices up by 10% within a very short window of time. Then what happened, if you look at the charts, by December of 2010, that $300,000 median house price was back down to $303,000. So, cool, I got a $10,000 tax credit. Well. Shoot, using that tax credit, all of us at the same time forced house prices up 30 grand on this median house. So technically, I lost $20,000. You gave me 10 grand to go buy a house, but we all ran at the same time because it was in a short window to take advantage of it. It forced that house price up. Fast forward now to 2020 and 2021, we have the shortest inventory and supply of homes we've ever had. What are we gonna do? We already have the biggest demographic of home buying individuals between 26 and 34 the United States has ever seen just on population size. The millennial generation that is all reaching that home buying age right now, meaning we have more individuals ever in United States history that are the age of 26 to 34 than has ever existed at any time before. For the first time ever, they beat the baby boomer population. Now we have all of those individuals that have a very, very low unemployment rate because they have kept their jobs through the pandemic that we've gone through because typically it's usually people in the upper end of the age spectrum at somebody's job that usually, unfortunately, those have seen higher you know, unemployment numbers than the lower people that have been at that job for a shorter period of time. Why? Because they typically make a little bit less money than somebody that's been at the job for 20 years. Now we've taken all of those individuals and we've forced them into a shortage of housing and all of those people running in, we've already seen about 7% appreciation year over year over year over year. Now we're gonna incentivize them on a tax credit to go in even more? Well, what is that gonna do? We only have a finite number of homes and there's not more homes that are going to be coming onto the market over the last 12 months to meet the demand if you put a tax credit in there. A tax credit should be used to stimulate people buying homes. We already have tons of people buying homes. We have too few homes compared to the buyers that we already have. So people that wanna take advantage of this tax credit, don't get me wrong, tax credits are nice, but don't think of it as a, this great value add that you're getting $15,000 of free money. Because if that gets passed, 
What do you think that's gonna do to house prices? You're already in some markets getting 20 and 30 and 40 offers on homes because the cost to build homes for the previous 10 years was so expensive. We have a mass shortage of homes that hit the market and we have more home buyers than ever reaching the age of buying homes. So we already have this mass shortage and now you're gonna throw gasoline on that fire? That's just gonna even put prices up far higher. So if we saw a 10% jump the last time one was introduced and back then you had far less people that could even qualify to buy a home because they had just gone through one of the worst recessions we had seen since the Great Depression, what do you think's gonna happen now? Do you really think that house prices are gonna stay the same and that $15,000 tax credit is just gonna be free money? No, house prices are gonna go up way more than 15% with those additional people jumping off the fence all at one time to buy houses. I think a tax credit is a great idea, but if you do do a tax credit, make sure that tax credit is a much longer proposed period of time so people know that they have a little time to use it rather than the last one that was done. And the way it's currently being proposed right now is in the same thing. It's a one year tax credit that's being proposed. So be very, very, very careful when you see the headlines of first time home buyer tax credit and thinking this is great for the real estate market. Yes, it is great because people are gonna wanna get out there and buy homes, but it's not great for the buyer that's gonna end up paying a lot more money for that home than that tax credit is worth.